Okay, I just want to welcome to the podcast one of the best comedians in America and the guy who's going to eventually admit to the murder of Jeffrey Epstein. We'll get the legendary uh, Rich Foss. Rich, how are you doing today? Not bad. I'm on the run, but uh, what, what can you do? Sometimes you just got to, you know, do what some some people with money tell you what to do and you got to do it. <laughs> Well, uh, whenever you get time on the run, don't forget to check out VossRoast.com. That is a fantastic website. Well, it's not a way. It's a roast. It's a, it's not really a website. It's how you buy the roast, VossRoast.com. But I guess uh, it goes directly to the roast. You rent it for five bucks or pay ten bucks. Personally, uh, I would buy the fucking thing so you could watch it more than once. But who am I? I'm just a guy that makes the money off it. Hey, but uh, speaking of roast, they, they announced today they're doing the Alec Baldwin roast soon. Um, yeah. One one of the roast days is infamous legendary comedian uh, Caitlyn Jenner. Uh, uh, so I gotta ask, what, what's that like for someone like you who's like actually a comedian and hasn't killed anyone? Uh, oh, hold on. Let me. Can you see me? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, look, those roasts are celebrity-based roasts. They're, they try to get the names they can that's going to get the most viewers, you know. And and they're all going to have writers, you know. Matter of fact, Bonnie's writing on that roast. Uh, my wife is going to write on that roast. So they're going to get the best writers, and, and it's a celebrity-based you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, commodity. You yeah. Know, I mean, on my roast was friends. It was personal. It's a better roast. You know, the Dean Martin roast, the old roasts were, were better because they were friends. Now, like everything else, things are commercialized. And, you know, it's about numbers and who's going to sell tickets. People are going to tune in, you know, to see her. her you know, and, 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 you know, you're going to have to be careful what you say about, about, what's her name, Caitlyn Jenner? Is it Caitlyn? Yeah. What you say, you know, they're, they're not going to let everything pass. You know, it's got to go through standards and practice. So, uh, personally, I like a roast with more comics. Obviously, so many of those celebrities have bombed and some have done really well. I mean, uh, I, I forget who, you know, some of them do well, uh, you know, but I, I prefer comedians and I'm a long winded fucking douchebag. That was one stupid fucking question. And I go on for like 10 fucking minutes. I hate myself. But uh, the course has never been a better comedian than when uh, Mike, the situation, Sorrentino roasted Donald Trump. I mean, that was uh, Rodney Dangerfield ripped them off. Well, that was unwatchable when that kid did that or that guy did that. It was unwatchable. I roasted Trump at a roast at the Friars, you know, when the Friars broke away from Comedy Central. I roasted Trump. Uh, it was 15 years ago because my wife was there and we weren't married yet. My wife was there. Norton was there. Opie and Anthony were there. My father. 2,000 people in the audience. And I thought I was going to end my career in New York, but I did pretty well. I mean, fucking Trump, you, you know, any year you want, you can roast that fucking idiot. His problem is he's too handsome. It just makes us all jealous of him. Ugh, he's a fat orange. Well, uh, speaking of fat, that brings me to my next question. You're about to go on tour with uh, Bob Kelly, uh, Ron Bennington, and... Uh, uh, fuck. Jim Florentine. Jim Florentine. I forgot the, the diversity hire. But uh, i got to say, what's it like when you go on tour with a group of comedians? Because they're all hilarious. Is, is it a mixture of being, this is going to be great for the paying customer? Or on one half, do you think, oh, fuck, I've got to compete with three others every night? No, there's no competition because, and this is an ego on a one to ten scale. We're all like tens, I mean, because we've been doing it. So we're all tens. 
So it, it, you know, I'd rather be on the road with friends of mine than go into some club and have some fucking middle act that lights himself on fire that I got to follow. You know what I mean? So I know what I'm up against with, with my friends who I've worked with many times. Uh, and we're doing theaters. You know, there's a big difference between theaters and comedy clubs. You know, a uh, comedy club, you got to deal with them passing the fucking checks out. You know, fucking buffalo wings and fucking waiters and waitresses and whatever. You know, a theater show is so much. I love club comedy. Don't get me wrong. I love doing the clubs. That's what I am. I'm a club comic. But a theater, you know, when I went, went on tour years ago, uh, after last comic standing with two two other comics, it was fucking great. We go into a theater, fucking sell it out, you know. And and the people that come usually to theaters are fans. Comedy clubs, a lot of them are coming because they got fucking free passes. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. You know, but so- I, but I gotta ask you because the one thing I love about you when you're doing stand up or being interviewed on O and A whatever. Uh, you pretty much say whatever you want. Like, for example, you were just at the Jim and Sam show and you did this fucking brilliant line where uh, you and Bonnie were on the panel and you said about uh, my ex-wife, I miss her dearly. Like, that was a fucking yeah. great line. Yes. But uh, recently, Joe Rogan, there's a lot of YouTubers uh, who are now going after him because he's been shutting them down if they publicly criticize him. So uh, what's your take on the Joe Rogan uh, censorship stuff? Well, I don't know what's going on with Rogan. I mean, I've known Rogan for, what, 30 years or whatever, Uh, 25, 30 years. And I've always been a fan. I'm not just saying that because he's got a big podcast. I've always got along with Rogan. So I don't know what's going on. What do you mean? Tell me what's what's going on. Because I don't Uh, know what. Well, there's this guy called uh, Beige Frequency. He's a YouTuber, and he makes these sort of documentaries slash uh, hit pieces, I think you could call them. And he did one trashing, is his name Brendan Schaub, who's Joe Rogan's friend. Uh-huh. And uh, Joe Rogan's people have really tried to get it deleted and scrubbed from the internet. Uh, I, don't, I don't know the story. I don't think Rogan would do that personally, try to, you know, I think Rogan's, I don't know. I would think he's too big to even fucking deal with, you know, deal with something like that. Uh, I, I, I really, I don't know the story. I, I'm, I would be 99% sure Rogan is fucking pro freedom of speech. I would be, you know, I, I would be pretty sure of that. So, and if, and if go ahead. Sorry, I was gonna say and if Rogan has any taste, he'd be going to Vossroast.com. No, what's that? If he had any, be, I, I'm sure Rogan, if he had time, he would watch. I mean, there's so many comics on it that he likes. But I I would imagine No, I I mean it, it goes without saying that he's fucking pro First Amendment. You know, so I don't know the story behind. I don't even know who Brendan Shaw is. Maybe I met him. Maybe I didn't. I don't know who he is. I do know a lot of Rogan's guys who I'm friends with, like fucking Kreischer or Joey Diaz. You know, I met Segura twice. I've done radio with him twice. Seemed like a nice guy. You know, so uh, I don't really notice who Brendan Shaw is. So I, I have nothing, you know, whatever. Who the fuck knows? But a lot of shit on the internet. That's what's wrong with the fucking internet, though. Even though people are pro, I mean, pro First Amendment, you know, the internet gives people a platform that shouldn't have a fucking platform. Who the fuck are half these people, you know, reviewing somebody when they have no fucking clue? You know, they they probably never even been to a fucking live show. They're just giving their stupid opinion, and somehow in a Google search, that might come up first, you know. Uh, the, the, you know, people, some people should just shut their fucking mouths. That's it. <laughs> well, uh, somebody who didn't shut their mouths, of course, and I don't know if you're friends with him or not, but uh, Louis C.K., and of course, he had the whole big scandal about a year or two ago, and now he's been starting to make his comeback, but there seems to be some sort of a backlash against him. So what's your take on the return of Louis C.K. and the 
fucking backlash against him? Uh, hold on, let me take a sip of this. Well, while Rich is taking right. a sip, everybody should go check out uh, VossRoast.com. Anyhow, uh, look, you know, Louis paid a lot. He paid a big fucking price for what he did. You know, I think a lot of the problem was when that came out, it was dur- during the whole Harvey Weinstein stuff and just a lot of bad shit was going down. And I think, you know, what he did, obviously, uh, it was 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 bad shit. But he paid for it. What the fuck? Is the guy never supposed to do comedy again? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's both, bo- you know, fucking murderers get out of jail and get a second chance. You know, major fucking criminals. What what should he do? Become a plumber now? Uh, you know, a roofer? In, go back to school and become, a, you know, a, a fucking social worker? He's a fucking comic. That's what he does. You know, he, he fucking paid his price. I don't know. How, if, or when, or where, or what, if he apologized, I'm sure, I'm not sure, but I would imagine he did personal apologies to these people, Uh, you know, he paid his price, so he's a fucking comic, that's what he does, you know, uh, you know, look, they've given, there's athletes they've given five or six chances to, you know, there's athletes that fucking have, you know, done horrible horrible things with drugs and domestic violence and they still you know get a second and third chance you know steve howe was uh what was he with the yankees you know cocaine six seven times i kept taking them back you know you pay your fucking price that's what i thought in this country you pay your fucking price and then you you get another chance you know not if you're a pedophile in my opinion one chance you're you cart you're done that's my opinion when it comes to pedophiles. They don't get a second chance. Yeah. But uh, well, speaking of pedophiles, of course, uh, you wrote for the Oscars. Uh, but I got that one. <laughs> how, does that, I, how does that connect? I, I don't know. I'm just trying to, have, you know, <laughs> trying to fucking stir it up over here, you know. But uh, when you wrote for the Oscars, what was that like? Because there was a lot of connected people there, like industry types. But you're uh, you're like a, a comic. You're not afraid to say cunt flaps or whatever. But how was it writing for the most PC fucking uh, crowd in the world? Well, I was I was writing for the host, and a lot of it was. Look, when you write for the look, when I wrote for Chris, I wrote on two Oscars. But Chris is going in doing what he wants. You might throw him a line to punch it up. You know, might say, hey, take it in this direction. Just give them some, you know, uh, maybe a piece of advice on something. But he's going to do what he wants to fucking do. He's the host. I'm just throwing shit his way, you know, and hopefully he took, takes one or two things. You know, uh, I guess as a host for the Oscars nowadays, it's fucking a lose-lose, you know, situation. You know, nobody wants to do that because... You know, well, you know, they they're going to go into your look. They're going into everybody's past history. You know, you could have done something thirty fucking. Look, I was a crack addict. I got thirty three years clean, but I was a drug addict. You know, uh, you know, and 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 I bring it up all the time. So you can't, you know, if something happens for me, you know, good again in my career, which things do come along all the time and. And they go, well, he was a crack. Yeah, I was a crack at it. I was, let me tell you, I loved that shit back then. Okay? But it was killing me and I stopped. So, uh, you know, nobody wants to host these shows because they're just going to fucking, you know what I mean? It's just, it's lose-lose. And the audience sucks. Those fucking crowds stink. You know, they want a fucking tap dancer. Yeah, fucking Sean Penn wouldn't laugh at Leslie Nielsen. Uh, pulling a mooner at Michael Jackson, he would just sit there and go, "There's hungry black people in New Orleans." Yeah, fuck. Yeah, and I'm not saying him, but so many people are hypocrites. They're all fucking hypocrites. The whole world. Uh, but of course, I haven't had a funny fucking line. People are thinking, "What does this guy do for a living?" He's not even. He hasn't said a funny fucking line yet. I stink. 
Well, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll get do it. Just uh, tell I'm an astrologist. <laughs> <laughs> Is your gynecologist over here? Bro, oh. I don't even know who the fuck you are. You might just be some guy in a fucking in your garage with fucking seven fucking listeners. I don't. Do you want me to tell you why I'm doing this? Don't take it personally. Because at some point, I want to work Ireland so I can play golf. I just want to do some gigs in Ireland. Uh, I contacted one guy that I never followed up or he didn't get back to me or he booked some rooms. My manager has not gotten me into any of these festivals yet there. I just want to come to Ireland and play golf. That's why I'm doing your fucking podcast. Nothing personal. But if it was some fucking half a head guy which is half a head and said, you want to do my podcast? I live in Ireland. I'd say yes. Not because it's you. So don't fucking think, hey, he's doing it because of me. I'm doing it because I want to work Ireland. So you see what I'm saying? Do you understand? I understand this. And you I, might not even be in fucking Ireland for all I know. You might be some fucking backwoods in Denmark or fucking Brussels or wherever with some fucking Irish accent pretending you're in Ireland. So I could be getting fucked right now. You see? Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't worry. I'll, I don't fuck uh, white men. Okay. But, uh, of course, you, you mentioned there that you're a recovered uh, drug addict. And one of the people I love is Artie Lang. And, of course, he's gone through some fucking hell lately. So what's your take on the latest of the uh, Artie Lang troubles? I, I heard, Last I heard, he was in uh, rehab. And he's, I guess he's doing well because he's still there. I haven't seen him around, so I guess he's doing well. Uh, hopefully, nicest guy in the world, you know. Uh, simply, uh, just just such a nice guy. But you know, addiction is not prejudice. Addiction will go after fucking anybody. It doesn't fucking matter who you are. Entertainers, doctors, lawyers, uh, house painters. It's fucking addiction. That's all. So. Hopefully he's doing well because you can't meet a nicer guy than Artie Lang. I'm serious. Fucking just a nice guy. So yeah, I, I love him and it's just it's a shame. And I just think he needs like a good a better support system because clearly whoever he's with are seriously fucking enabling him. Well listen, it's not your support system. The bottom line is you gotta wanna stop and surrender. He has enough support, just enough fucking people. It's cause he wanted, at, maybe not now, but when he was active, it's because you want to get high more than you want to stay clean. If he wanted to stay clean, he wouldn't be hanging around with the people that are fucking, you know, getting high. So hopefully he hears something in this rehab that he connects with that will save his fucking life. And maybe this time it'll work. A lot of people don't get all the fucking chances he gets. Some people don't get a, a second chance. Some people die. You know, some people go to jail. You know, so he's had a lot of fucking chances. And hopefully this is the one that he connects with. That's all. It's not it, your support system. It's you. No one can make you get high and no one can make you not get high. That's all on you. Uh, well, of course, earlier Rich mentioned his wife is the great Bonnie McFarland, also hilarious. And then the podcast, My Wife Hates Me. But uh, one of the most infamous moments on that show was uh, on the air. She uh, blew you for a few seconds. I, you know, I don't know. Listen to that podcast. I don't know if that's... I mean, we do it in our house, so anything could happen, right? Nice! Anything could happen. <laughs> Has... I mean, I don't think she's going to fly to Ireland and do your podcast and do, you know, but... <laughs> You never know. Yeah, you never know. Checks dig me. So listen, here's the deal. What part of Ireland do you live in? Uh, Belfast. Is that where's that? Like, is that? I don't know anything about Ireland. Is that like both of my wives are Irish. My first wife was Irish. My second wife Irish. Uh, so all my kids are half Irish. Come to think of it. Anyhow, is that by? Dublin or it's the, uh, the, the two big cities in Ireland is uh, Dublin and Belfast yeah so this is Belfast is in the north of Ireland is is there comedy clubs there 
What do you guys do? Uh, we mostly just binge drink and uh, try not to fight anyone bigger than you. Really? You don't yeah. Have, you don't have comedy clubs there? Well, they do, but uh, it's hard to tell who's your comedian because, as you can tell, no one from Ireland is funny. Oh, yeah, there's some funny guys from Ireland. What do you call it? Uh, what's his name? Maxwell? Is that his last name? Oh, I forget. Little skinny guy. Oh, I know who you mean. He's got a big fucked up nose. I don't fucking know his nose. Uh, I did radio with him. In, uh, I, I did Open Anthony with him years ago. That, that uh, uh, brings me to the next thing I'd love to ask you about here is... Uh, I first became aware of you from Opie and Anthony, and of course they had uh, Anthony get fired, and then ONA had a pretty bad uh, fallout. Well, what's your take on the the fallout with uh, Opie and Anthony? And uh, do you think they'll ever at least make up, if not do a show together again? That thing is so far over, and in the past, it was a, it was fun while it lasted. It's done. It's over. They're not getting back together. They're not going to become friends. And even if they were, nobody's rehiring those two. It's done. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? That that type of fucking radio is done. They're done as a team. You know, Anthony has his fucking, you know, podcast network going. Uh, you know, they... They had a run. They had a good run. It's over. You know, it's just like, you know, it's like Sonny and Cher. One hit a tree. <laughs> I, don't, I don't fucking know. It's like, I don't fucking know. But no, uh, they're done. They're done. And, you know, that audience still hangs on to so much shit. Uh, you know, it was funny stuff. But uh, I don't know. It's just... It was some real fun times, but it's done. Do you think the uh, Opie and Anthony fan base is uh, more of a curse than anything? Because it really seems that they just hate everyone. Like, they don't like anything about anyone. That's not the real com- the real comedy fan base from them. Come out to the shows, support, buy CDs, buy the rose, you know, go to the Patrice Benefit. You know, the real fan, the fucking trolls, they're all haters because, you know, they're just fucking, they're trolls. But there's that's only a small percentage, you know, the fucking idiots on, on, you know, that go after, you know, they'll go after anybody. They just do it to get, like I said, it's the fucking internet giving people a platform that shouldn't have a platform. You know, Twitter, see, the, here's the dumb thing about some of these, you know, they'll, they'll trash you, but they go, and then you go, well, then why do you follow me on Twitter? If you don't mm. like me, why would you follow me? I wouldn't follow a leader that I didn't like that leader. It, you know, uh, I hate this fucking guy. Where are we going with him? So why do you follow me if you have something negative to say? Why would you listen to these shows if you don't like, if you have something negative to say about the shows? Don't mm. listen. You know, so there are, that's only a small percentage of so many of them are great comedy fans that like support comedy, you know, and and they don't live in their mom's basement and they're not fatties. <laughs> well, uh, Rich, we've now come to the I ask these three questions, to everybody, uh, and these are big, vital, life, important, changing questions. So here is the first one. Who's better, Wu Tang or Tupac Shakur? It, at what tennis? <laughs> <laughs> uh, at, at the hippity hop. I well, listen. Who's better? To tell you the truth, I always go with the ones that are alive. Because <laughs> they can't shoot you, or they can't. Well, they can. Yeah. They, no, because they. You know what? You know who who finishes the race first? Is is the you know. If you die in the middle of the race, you can't really win that race. I don't know. I mean, I'm not making jokes about Tupac's, you know, death. I don't even know. I couldn't tell you one Tupac song. I did like his tattoo work, but I can't tell you one Tupac song or one Wu-Tang song. So, 
Uh, you know what I'm gonna do right now? Here's what I'm gonna do. Wait, hold on. Let me get. I'm gonna grab. I'm grabbing. I'm grabbing a coin. Heads <laughs> two pack, tails Wu Tang. Head two pack. Got to go two pack. Excellent. Uh, who's better, Queen or the Beatles? Oh, uh, you know it's funny. I saw Queen in concert. Uh, the Beatles hand hands down. I mean, Queen was fucking great. And Queen is just getting their due now because of the fucking movie and everything. And, you know, they're finally, you know, when I saw Queen, they were great. But they, you know, they, they weren't, they didn't get really their due till they did uh, whatever, whatever concert that was, the, you know, the big one for the Queen. Uh, what was it, Live Aid? What was the big concert they did in in England? Uh, yeah, Live Aid, I think it was. But the Beatles, the Beatles went through so many changes, and 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 you know they they had generations follow them. You know what I mean? They they went from you know really corny type music to revolution and psychedelic and I, I would have to say the Beatles, but I, I, I like both of them. Although I, I would take Bowie over. over oh, yeah. I would take Bowie over all of them. Well, here, here's the big question, Rich, and this could change it all for you or ruin it all for you. And this is and a very vital, important question. <laughs> the Spice Girls are back. Who is your favorite Spice Girl? Whichever one will fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> the black one, then? I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Whichever one doesn't like an old lispy Jew bag. <laughs> oh, Definitely yeah, the one. black one. No, I would have to go with the, what's, you know what? The Beckham one. That girl. Uh, yeah. Not only was she smoking hot, she's married to a fucking great, great soccer player. He's a 10. Uh, she had a great clothing line. She had everything going for her. That fucking, that pussy is like gold. Okay? <laughs> if, you, if you, if you just, I'm telling you, that would be like eating gold. <laughs> I'd but, say she's a real hoa. So whatever, which, what's her name? Which one? Becca? Uh, Posh Spice. I don't know. The one that was married to the soccer player. I yeah. liked her haircut too. But sadly, that was the wrong answer. The best Spice Girl is Baby Spice because she's kind of fat, and I like that. Yeah, good, good. While you're feeding her, I'll be eating the other one. <laughs> well, Rich, uh, I just want to thank you so much for your time. I've been a fan of you for ages, but can I ask one favor? Uh, it, what, it, what? What? It, yeah, go ahead. Uh, one of my other editing jobs is I edit for this sports podcast called Keeping the 100. And one of the guys on that show is a, is a retired wrestler called Conan. Have you ever heard of him? Um, called what? Conan. Conan? Yeah, he's a Mexican guy. No, what does he do? Oh, he's a wrestler? Yeah, he used to be a wrestler. Yeah, well, what about him? But uh, he refuses to do my podcast out of spite. So anytime I get a guest on, I get them to, uh, I ask them to record a message to try to get Conan on my podcast. So would you mind doing that? Hey, Conan, listen to me. Listen to me, you fucking arrogant, out of work wrestler. Look at, oh, really? It's like, it's you're so busy now. Where are you at? like fucking autograph shows and two people are online shut your mouth do his podcast you fucking useless basement dweller that's fucking brilliant and uh i just want to thank rich Voss for giving me if i if i see this guy and he whips my fucking ass <laughs> <laughs> uh it don't just kick him in the hip he's old uh listen it was a real treat. I don't usually do these things, but like I said, eventually I'll be in Ireland somewhere doing comedy and playing golf. You don't play golf, do you? No, I'm not allowed to hold golf clubs uh, anymore. Okay, you're kind of pale. Get some sun. Anyhow, listen, uh, this has been a real fucking treat for you, 
and it's been <laughs> a total inconvenience for me. So lose my number, move on. Don't try to get other comics and go, hey, we had Voss, okay? Because, uh, the, like I said, this is an anomaly, whatever the word is. You know the word that I'm doing this. It's, an id sandwich? I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm losing. I'm tired. I played golf today already, and I, I got a bad neck. Uh, this has been a treat. Listen, uh, go help you. Go help your mom with the chores around the house, <laughs> and and do something productive with the rest of the day. All right. Okay. Get out, get out of the fucking house. Maybe go try to find a job. Do something. You know. Something productive, all right? Legally, too. Oh, okay. Legal. It's been, a, <laughs> it's been a real treat. Uh, Vossros.com, my wife hates me. Someday I'll see you guys in Ireland, I hope. I hear nothing but great things about Ireland. Everybody that's ever been there, nothing but great things. So eventually I'll be there. No problem. We can't wait to have you. All right. All Thanks right. for having me, man. No problem. Take Tell that out-of-work wrestler to go fuck himself. I gotta go. <laughs>